My film photography project is underway and I'm happily shooting HP5 on my Leica MP and 35 Cron for the next year. I'm limiting myself to this camera lens and film combo so I can stop thinking about gear and focus on the creative side of shooting with film. And so far it's going great! But these pictures don't just magically appear out of thin air. At some point, you're going to have to develop your film. Now, you can send it to a lab, but that can get real expensive real quick. Plus, I don't like the idea of strangers touching my negatives with their fingers. So I developed my own film at home, and that's what I want to talk about today. There's a few steps involved, but it's easier than you might think. Let's start with the equipment I use. Now, I'm no stranger to the darkroom, but I haven't touched film in nearly a decade. Plus, a recent brush with minimalism convinced me to get rid of anything that I wasn't actually using. So I had to start from scratch and buy everything all over again. Stupid minimalism. Fortunately, Patterson makes a film processing starter kit that has just about everything you need for under 100 bucks. It comes with three 600 mil graduates, a developing tank with two reels, some Milford chemicals that I'm probably not gonna use, but whatever, two sets of film drying clips, a nine inch thermometer, a chemical stir stick thingy, and a 35 millimeter cassette opener. It's like a bottle opener for your film. Eh, works. The kit sells for $99.95 at B&H, but if you bought all the individual pieces, you'd pay over 150 bucks. So it's definitely a good deal and it's the kit I got. But I still needed a few more things to be running at full speed. For me, I also grabbed a changing bag so I can load film with the lights on, a couple of smaller graduates for precision measuring, and finally some one gallon jugs to store my mixed chemicals. And speaking of chemicals, let's talk about those chemicals. Film processing is basically a three-step process with developer, stop bath, and fixer. For developer, I'm using D76 diluted one-to-one. -one. Now there are a ton of developer choices and everyone has their favorite, but D76 is reasonably priced and predictable, so it's a great place to start. Yeah, you have to mix it from powder, but just follow the instructions in the package and you should have no problem whatsoever. The kit even comes with a special magic wand stir stick thingy, so there's no excuses. Mix it, it's fine. Stop bath and fixer are less critical, but I happen to be using Ilfostop and Codafix, throw in a wetting agent like PhotoFlow to prevent water spots from forming when the film is drying, and you've got everything you need to develop film at home. But before we do any of that, we gotta talk about these plastic reels. The Patterson tank comes with plastic reels that can be broken apart and reassembled for 120 film if needed, but we're doing 35, so we're gonna keep this all small and nice. Loading your film onto the reels is pretty easy once you know how they work. If you look along the outer edge of the reel, you'll find the entrance gate surrounded by these sort of larger teeth. The teeth make the entrance point really easy to find by feel in the dark. There are ball bearings just past the gate on both sides of the reel. These little guys sit in the sprocket holes and advance the film forward when you twist the reel back and forth. And the rest of the reel is just a spiral for the film to advance onto. That's how they work. Let's get some film on there. Just remember, anytime you're dealing with film outside the cartridge, you need to be in complete darkness. I'm gonna keep the lights on so you can see what I'm doing, but don't do that with your own film or you'll ruin it quick. Once you're in the dark, you can open the cassette, grab your scissors and trim off the film leader. This creates a straight line on the leading edge and makes it much easier to get your film on the reel. Give your film a little squeeze along the edges to snap it to attention. Locate the gate by feeling for those teeth then guide your film onto the reel. It's, oh, that's not the gate. That's the gate. There we go. So again, it's so easy. Look how easy it is. Locate the gate by feeling for the teeth, then guide your film onto the reel. Once it's through the gate, you can sort of pull it around halfway onto the reel and start twisting to load it. It just magically goes into place. Nine years later. When you reach the end of the film, snip off the little plastic roller, then give the reel a couple more twists to advance the rest of the film all the way under the reel. When both reels are done, you can slide them on the stem, put them back in the tank, replace the funnel, click it closed to make the tank light tight, and the film's ready for a developer. But we still need to know how long to process our film. So this is a good time to talk about the Massive Dev Chart by digitaltruth.com. The Massive Dev Chart is a free website that contains recipes for pretty much every film and developer combination there is. But they also make an app version that includes the full Massive Dev Chart database plus a fantastic darkroom timer. So if we select Ilford HP5 plus D76 one to one and ISO 400, we can see the development time is 13 minutes at 20 degrees Celsius. And this page is actually a timer that's preset with all of the correct times for every stage of the development process. The timer is actually super well designed. It has a three second warning to let you know when it's time to agitate the developer. And it even has a metronome during agitation so you can keep the beat and do everything exactly the same way every time. Now, we know our development time and the timer's all set up. 
Let's get the chemicals ready. If you're processing two reels of 35 millimeter film, the Patterson tank needs 600 mils of solution. Now I'm doing D76 one to one, so I mix 300 mils of stock solution with 300 mils of water to get 600 mils of working solution. While you're at it, you might as well measure out 600 mils of stop bath and fixer at the same time. Quick tip here, developer and fixer look almost identical when they're in the graduates. So I keep a rubber band around my developer's graduate, so I always know what's what. Now, according to my recipe, the developer needs to be at 20 degrees Celsius, and depending on your room temperature, you may need to raise or lower that temperature. I usually run a 20 degrees Celsius water bath and set the graduate holding the developer in that bath, and eventually it'll equalize to 20 degrees and everyone will be happy. It's also important to keep the developer at 20 degrees throughout the development process. So anytime I'm not handling the tank by adding chemicals or agitating, I keep the tank sitting in that same water bath, and that keeps the temperature pretty stable throughout the 13 minute development time. Without the water bath, I've seen the temperature raise as much as two degrees Celsius during development, and that would affect contrast and I don't want that so just keep it in the bath and you're fine. I don't really worry if the stop bath and fixture are a degree or two warmer or cooler. The developer is the one that matters so when that's at 20 degrees Celsius we're finally ready to develop some film. Finally! Line up all three graduates in order of developer, stop bath and fixer and launch the massive dev app so everything's ready to go. Quickly pour the developer into the tank, replace the outer lid, give it a burp to seal it, then start the timer and begin your first round of agitation. It's a bit of a juggling act to get everything started, so having everything lined up and well organized is really important here. For agitation, I'm currently doing one inversion every two seconds for a total of four inversions. And I give the tank a little twist on every inversion just to keep things mixing around all nice and good. After the last inversion, I give the tank a little tap, then put it back in the 20 degrees Celsius water bath and wait for the next cycle. Agitation happens once a minute for the duration of your development time. For me, that's 13 minutes. 13 minutes of standing there. Shaking that thing. Eventually you'll get to the last minute. I usually start pouring out the developer with about 15 seconds left on the timer. That's about how long it takes me to pour the developer in so everything evens out. Immediately add the stop bath, agitate and let sit for a minute. When that's done, empty out the stop bath and add the fixer. Fixing typically takes about five minutes. Just follow the times in the app and you'll be fine. When fixing's done, pour out the chemicals and you're ready to wash the film. I use the Ilford method of fill, agitate, dump and repeat. Seems to work fine. The idea is you add fresh water to the tank, place the lid, do five full inversions, dump out the water, add fresh water, do 10 inversions, dump out the water, add fresh water, do 20 inversions, dump out the water, and your film should be clean as a whistle. When you're done washing, fill the tank with 600 mils of distilled water and add three mils of PhotoFlow. This is a wetting agent that prevents water spots from forming when the film is drying. You don't have to use PhotoFlow, it's just the one I've always used. There's a number of different brands, but don't skip this step because you don't want to deal with water spots on negatives. It's hideous. Let that sit for a second and we're ready to dry the film. You need a clean, dust-free place to dry your film. You can get specialized drying cabinets, but I just use my bathroom. Run the hot water full blast for a couple minutes to create some humidity in the room. This helps any dust in the air settle before you hang your film to dry. Remove the film from the reel and attach the clips with the black weighted one on the bottom. Then all you have to do is hang your film and close the bathroom door on your way out. Wait a few hours for the film to dry and that's it. That's really everything I do to develop 35 millimeter film at home. Now all I gotta do is figure out scanning. But that's another video. Hey, I wanna hear from you guys. Are you developing your own film at home? What's your favorite film and developer combination? How do you feel about these plastic reels? Post your ideas in the comments down below and keep that conversation going. And as always, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'm trying to reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers and I'd love to have you along for the ride. I got a ton of film photography videos coming up and I'd hate for you to miss any of them. But for now, I'm Carl from Street Shooter and that's enough of me. Now get out there and develop some film already. It's fun. If you like standing in the same spot for 13 minutes shaking plastic container filled with chemicals, I mean, what's not to like?